G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we're having a look at a Mitsubishi Triton 2015 model with a bit of rough running. I have had a brief look at this previously. Anyway, for now, let's get into it and see if we can nut it out together. The other day was quite cold and when I went to start up this vehicle to bring it into the workshop it was running really rough. In fact it was only running on three cylinders and the whole car was shaking all over the place. Generally speaking you can do what's called a leak back test. That's where the injector leaks back or sends some fuel back to either the fuel tank or the fuel pump to be recycled after the high pressure is used within the cylinder doesn't use all the high pressure through the injector into the cylinder. Some of it is actually returned back to the pump or to the tank itself. And on the way, it actually lubricates the injector itself, the solenoid and the pintle, etc. So the fuel is actually used for lubrication purposes as well. These injectors on the Tritons are a little bit tricksy, in fact. They hide them underneath the rocker cover. What were they thinking? So it makes this test near impossible to do. So what I'm going to do today is try and measure using a WPS or pressure transducer, a Pico pressure transducer to measure the pulses that come out on the return line going back to the pump. Will it work? Look, I don't know, but we've got to try and diagnose this thing for the guy, get it running nice and smooth. When I hooked up the scan tool and had a look, there was no codes present, but the live data told a story. It's about three days since I looked at this last. And I've just hooked up the scan tool again, and you can see number four. So um, check number one, number four cylinder is minus 0 0.053 milliseconds. How does that compare with the other day? I took a photo on my phone, and we can see that it is uh, minus 0 0.027. So we're actually, at the moment, we're having more fuel pulled off um, than it was the other day. And I suppose that's consistent. Let's go down to the second check that they do. Uh, the other day it was 0 0.020, you can see there, and over here it's the same there, but this, this one over here, our first one, is certainly, well it's pretty much double uh, what it was the other day. To try and figure out if number 4 injector is in fact faulty, I'll be using the WPS500X. It's a Pico pressure transducer system, which has three various ranges. The beauty of this particular pressure transducer is that it has three individual ranges, which can go from, uh, what's that, 5 plus or minus PSI right through to plus uh, 500 PSI. It's got quite a range. So I'll be hooking it up to my return line off my pump. I can't really access the uh, return of the injectors individually. And then I'll try and see if there's some sort of uh, anomaly, if you want to put it that way, uh, on number four in particular. And then I'll try and use uh, current as a trigger. I've got my WPS hooked up and I've got that into a T-piece going onto my return line onto my fuel pump, my high pressure fuel pump before it heads back to the tank overall. Also, I've hooked up a current clamp. The reason being is because I want to be able to trigger it. I want to see what number four is doing. Now there's two wires going onto the injector here. Uh, which one is the correct one? Look, it doesn't matter. If you get the wrong wire, all it's going to do is read it upside down. So at that point in time, flip your clamp over and it will read the right way. No big deal. Two wires in, out. Current is the same on either wire. One will be a positive and one will be a negative coming back. It's a complete circuit. No big deal. Okay. So at this particular point in time, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. I just want to look for some strange thing that stands out. And I've got it in zoom mode. I should have it in range 3, which is about 1 to 5 psi. But I've got zoomed it right in because there's really not much pressure coming on the return line. And I just want to see what it's actually doing. So let's start it up and see what it does. So I've got my channel 1, my current clamp, set on 20 amps. As you can see here, I've put it on the 20 amp scale on the current clamp itself. And in fact, I have zeroed it as well. My pressure transducer, I have it in the zoom range. It's on range 3, which indicates that it should be in the 1 psi to 5 psi range. But I've also zoomed it as well. So I've zoomed in as close as I can possibly do it, just so I can pick up um, any sort of information that's there. I've got a trigger set up here. I might actually move it over to one side here so we can get more information happening across the screen. 
I've got it set at uh, 100 milliseconds per division because I want to pick up as much information as possible. Okay, so pff, let's start it, see what it does. Just keep in mind, this is a trigger for every fourth cylinder, or number four cylinder of course. So in between here and here is four and the other cylinders, whatever the firing order happens to be. So it might be one, three, four, two perhaps, I don't know. But the main thing is I want to look if there's something strange happening at this particular point when number four is uh, returning its fuel. If it's different to the others, then yes, it might be uh, a leaky injector. So let's have a look at what that signal is doing when I turn it off. Well, let's freeze that, shall we? So let's zoom in and see what we've found there. So there's between number four and number four. That's exactly what we're after right there. Now, if I get uh, my rulers across, uh, just so I can break it up in between the four cylinders, so I put it right on that first one there. Uh, this is uh, injecting twice. As you can see, the two lines there, you probably can't see it unless I zoom right out, but I'm zoomed in a fair bit at the moment. Uh, so now what I need to do is zoom overview. No, that's not that one. Uh, rulers, I think it is. And we need to do number four. So there's four divisions that I want. And I want to enter that, which I've done now. Get this little fella out the road. I'll put him out there, I suppose. All right, so what I'm looking for is something that's standing out. And I'm, ah, look, it's not really standing out too much, is it? Though that being said, just before we hit number four, we are certainly getting a drop, aren't we, overall? Okay, so if we bring this fellow down, one of the rulers down, you can see it's quite low there compared to a high up the top there. So if that means something, honestly, I don't know. Um, it does tend to drop away. So this is our fourth one, of course, isn't it? Now I'm getting my head around it. Just keep in mind that this is when the injector is activated, okay? So it's opened, it's opened, etc. And we're getting a higher point up here. And then, of course, then the other injectors would take place here, here, and here. Um, but there certainly seems to be a high return here, a higher pressure, if you will, um, in comparison to the other ones as they slowly go back down and then of course I would gather, let's just zoom across here, let's cruise across over there, do we see, yes we do see a consistency here guys. So once again this one over here is higher than um, our other one, we haven't got the rulers in there but straight after this one here should be another high point which there is, then it drops right back down and these are fairly consistent across the board as you can see. Once we get our injection over here, once again, we should find a high point, which we do. Oh, we're at the end of our um, zoom there. But yes, we are certainly seeing a higher range, um, a higher pressure being returned after the fourth injection. Look, there's certainly a variation, isn't there? We've got two high points over here. We've got an extremely low point over here and something in between where the pressure varies. So I'll take a photo, I'll contact the guys at TAT and see if anyone can help me with diagnosing um, the information or the data that I have in front of me right now. So that is number four. Take a photo. Certainly consistent, even though it's not consistent with the actual injector. It's consistent, uh, we're seeing a low point in particular right here and then a high point here and here and here, but there's definitely a trough here somewhere. So, eh, look, I don't know how it relates to the injector itself, if I can identify it, but certainly there's a drop in pressure. Um, if there's a drop in pressure returning, perhaps the fuel is leaking into the cylinder, that would explain why there's less pressure going back uh, to the pump itself on the return line. All right, armed with that information, I'm now going to chat to the TAT guys. Those guys are far smarter than me, and uh, they might have a suggestion as to what I'm looking at. But to me, I'm seeing a drop right here that concerns me. So I know it's not lining up with the injectors like I was hoping it would, using uh, you know an injector as a trigger, the current. But uh, I'm just going off the pressure 
that we're receiving in the return line and something doesn't look right to me, this particular point here. So I've spoken to the guys at TAT and they've all said that I've done all the testing that I possibly can do in a reasonable sense to try and figure out if it has a faulty injector. What we've found is when we look at the small injection quantity relearn, there's number four that stands out, isn't it? It's constantly pulling back fuel. And of course, when we look at the waveform with our pressure transducer, we can see that there's a little bit of an anomaly there um, that stands out as something as being different. So it's going to have to be a judgment call at this point, and I believe that the injectors need to be replaced. So after all the diagnosis that I've done, I've got approval from the customer to go ahead and replace the injectors. Of course, I'll have to recode them as well and carry out what's called a small injector quantity relearn. I hope you enjoyed this little diagnostic trip that we've been on together and that it can help you in your diagnosis as well. I hope you enjoyed the video today and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like, feel free to comment down below and of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos, do you? No, of course not. Okay guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.